you cannot understand the rules of making things unless you know what the choices are. I won't see all of the potential choices that a person has unless I actually make it myself and have those questions posed to me while I'm doing it. You know, and sometimes choices come up that you don't even, that you didn't even know were there. And it's experimental archaeology that, that reveal the steps that are involved with making things and the questions that come up. And these questions then show us the patterns, which show us the rules, which then show us the individual and in, you know, behind the, the kipu, the person or the individuals, you know, who are making that kipu. And then those people tell us then about the society. Part of my analysis is looking at the steps involved with making a keep. Some of the dyes take multiple years to mature. Other dyes are processed fresh. So cochineal comes from an insect. When you dry and grind up the insects, it produces an amazing red dye. I also grow my own cotton. I worry about it all year long. In the fall, I de-seed it. I fluff it up. I spin it and ply it and make it into cord. So once I've I've spun and I've dyed everything, then I actually construct the kipu cords. And then finally, I add knots. So we're looking at all of the choices that were made in order to get patterns. And it's those choices, those are the things that while well, over time, you, when you analyze enough of them, you start seeing, okay, they consistently use two ply, they consistently use these spinning, they consistently do this. Those must be important to them because you don't see a lot of variation. But this attribute over here, there's lots and lots of variation. So why is that? Is it because they didn't care about that attribute or is it supposed to have a lot of variation? Those are the kinds of questions that come up and those are the kinds of patterns that you can only see by doing experimental archaeology.